What are you doing, New Year's, New Year's Eve? How's it going, everybody? Welcome uh, to uh, the 12 Goals of Christmas. I am your host, Ramsey Claus, here. It is New Year's Eve, hopefully, if you're watching this uh, on the day that it comes out. Uh, hopefully, you had a great New Year's Eve if you've come back to this later. Um, if you're watching it from the past, congrats on uh, time travel and all that. And I uh, hope you're figuring out a way to fix your New Year's that went wrong. Um, we, like I said uh, uh, on yesterday's episode, we're in the Patrick Ajamong, uh portion of the countdown here. And what I've decided to do uh, after we saw yesterday's great goal, number six on the countdown, uh, Call Pat Part 1, we're just going to do Call Pat Part 2 uh, as, as number seven on our list. And because it's New Year's Eve, I, I don't care. I've, what I've decided to do, I'm doing that thing that I, that I generally hate and that I know a lot of people hate, that I know my boy John Hayes hates which is I'm going to take a countdown and I'm going to sign multiple things into one thing. This is a, a big uh, philosophical debate. Back in the days when I used to work on SportsCenter, uh, it was like, hey, in your top 10 plays countdown, can you have like multiple plays squeezed in as like number seven and it's like multiple plays? And it's like, are you allowed to do that? Uh, that's cheating. You know, you're trying to get more than 10 in, in a 10 countdown. I am going to try to get more than 12 goals in a 12-goal countdown, and uh, I don't care if it's cheating because uh, – what I've done is I've taken a series of three goals that are all, all um, thematically related. And then, you know, that's how they all fit together as one entry in the countdown. And it's called Pat Part 2 because it's Ajumong. It's always been Ajumong. It, it always will be Ajumong. This guy's a superstar, hopefully. Um, lot, you know, a lot of soccer left in his career. Things could go a lot of different ways. But uh, everything he showed us this year – showed us that he's worthy of a big bonus uh, supersized entry in the countdown. So let's watch a few plays, shall we? Nice play from Charlotte. Keep ball, looking for that opening. Pushing it. <clears throat> High and wide now, looking for Adjiman. Adjiman, can he finish? Oh, what a goal! And what an impact! Patrick Adjiman, the 22-year-old pounces in style, and we're all level with just over 10 minutes to play. Just some direct play over the top. You know you've got a big target there. Adjiman just freeing himself up some space. Steve Clark makes the wrong decision to come off his line, unable to challenge for it. Adjiman knows he's got an open goal, just slots that home. Just got done talking about complete match. At home and. Oh, it's a disaster! An absolute disaster for Houston! And within seconds, Charlotte lead here late in the round of 16. From the quarterfinals to now 2 1 down and just a blind pass backwards. <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh man. Uh, so wh why, how did a how did an own goal, how did a back pass own goal sneak into our top 12 goals of the year countdown? Well, it's because what I like to say there is if you remember right in the season, those happen, those two plays happened within seconds of each other, the two different clips I just showed. Uh, it's it's Patrick Ajimong scoring twice with one goal, if that makes sense. He was so good. He was so just powerful and monstrous and dominant uh, with the first goal that um, it, it completely blew uh, Michael's mind. Mikhail, I believe, is the, the center back who scored the own goal, I believe is his name, uh, if I'm pronouncing that right. So he just beast so hardcore here. Like, and people would say Steve Clark made a mistake, but again, Ajibong like induces opponents into making mistakes because they don't know how to deal with him. He's like, he's just something that they're just intimidated by someone they've never seen before. Uh, so you'll see here, this is a great long ball. And, and this is the type of guy, this is the type of player and teammate that you can just send these speculative balls for to, because he just absolutely works the defender just like rides him. And, you know, but he does this stuff. He Patrick's really good. If he's reft correctly, as they say, he's going to just take over this lead because he does, he works hard to not foul guys. He works hard to stay on side. There's another, there's other goals I looked at 
in the game previous to this, uh, in fact, against Nakaxa, I think, where he um, he scored a goal and it was he he worked really well. He stayed like he could have easily been caught offside, but he held up his run just that split second to like stay onside. And like so he's got a, a level of maturity and, and game knowledge and just like he knows how to not foul and how he can like work a defender like that. I'm telling you. And then he knows he's got an empty net and it's finished. Like I said, people can can bash Clark there, but Ajay, he was scared. He was worried about he knew his best chance to stop this guy 1v1 was to, was to come forward and then he he messed it up and and Patrick made him pay. So uh, again, I, like a I, I like a great ball forward and man, that defender's just helpless and then Clarky Clarky blew it for sure. Clarky did blow it, but I don't care. It's still a beautiful goal. It's still like a this is what I call my caption for the goal in the countdown on the spreadsheet. By the way, was just, "Are you effing kidding me?" Like, like, uh, just, <laughs> I don't know. Pe there's people that are going to say this goal belongs nowhere near uh, a, a top countdown, but to me, to me, it truly does. I, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, call me crazy, but and then the own goal is just so funny, and you see he Patrick's there, and this guy Mikhail, he just like the, the the broadcast missed it really on the live on the first first look but they said they show it decently on the replay Haggard's going well this is you know two two goals one two scores one goal I guess is one way you could put it um they're just terrified that that you know they when the ball's in their uh in our offensive zone they're terrified of what Patrick might do to them so they just back pass it to the keeper out of out of sheer fear and uh and terror but uh so we're not done though so we're gonna like I said uh there's another goal Similar, so you saw, you know, the long ball forward goal um, to uh, Patrick versus Houston. Here's a, here's another one. Here's an even longer ball forward. This is uh, we love goalkeeper assists on the show, obviously. Uh, so why don't we take a look and a listen to uh, another Ajman goal that's uh, similar from the final game of the year. Ajman. Is there an opening here for Charlotte? Ajiman! Goal! Charlotte will not go down without a fight! Now then! Now then! Here we go again! Pathway card for Charlotte FC! Every time Red Bull have found that three-goal cushion, Charlotte have found their way back into it. And it's through the substitute coming in at halftime, and you can see the technique, the quality under pressure at the end to ride the challenge of Duncan all over his back. Neil is coming across to stay on his feet and find that finish. Just shows the desire of the number nine coming off the bench, trying to make a difference, change the game on his head. Again, are you effing kidding me? I mean... The, these the defenders are helpless against this guy, uh, you know, and they they can't they can't do anything to stop him if they wanted to. Like like, I don't understand why he stopped playing after the Seattle match that we talked about yesterday. After the Seattle the game the the point saving header, uh, he disappeared. And I realized Copetti came back, and I realized the investments in Copetti and Carroll all that. But like, at a certain point, you just got to play these guys. Uh, so I hope that Dino Smith recognizes that. Um, I think he does. He said, if you're good enough, you're old enough. Defender's just helpless here. And it's not like as he's fighting and fending off these guys using his strength, he's also using technicality and skill and smarts at the same time. He He's the total package. Um, I love the way you'll see on the replay from behind the goal. I also love the way that uh, Derek Jones like came and dapped him up. Like Derek Jones was like doing his substitution warmups and it just at the perfect time. And he came over and dapped up Patrick right after the goal, if you saw that. But um, Love a Kalina long ball. Got to say, I don't hate it. Uh, but look at him just like look up and pick his spot. That's the thing is he didn't just like, you know, run, 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 fight, 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 and then fall down and just like try to get a touch on it towards goal. He like picked his spot. He's like looking at like, he's like, he's not just like, am I going to score this? He's like, where do I want to score this? Where am I going to put it in on the net? So uh, absolute class from Patrick. Uh, him and Copetti together is not a bad thing whatsoever. So. That's your big pat section of the countdown. Um, day six and day seven get us through the end of 2023. Couldn't end 2023 in any more of a spectacular fashion in my mind uh, than to shout out Big Pat. 
Uh, we've got some more goals left to come. I think we got five or six more days left on this baby. So stick with us on the countdown. Uh, it, you can really start to think, you know, if you haven't seen your favorite goal of the season yet, is it going to make the countdown? There's only a few entries left. I can't guarantee everybody makes it. Not everybody gets a trophy on this list. So hopefully uh, I am Ramsey Claus, uh, but I only have so many gifts to go give around. You know, the elves, the elves only scored. We scored 60 goals this year. If you count open cup, leagues cup and MLS regular season and playoffs. So nice round number. Um, so we're only showing 20% of uh, you can only make the top 20%, you know, and as they say, 80% of the people do 20% of the work in a lot of corporate situations uh, or excuse me, sorry, 20% of the people do 80% of the work and 80 other percent of the people sit around and watch those 20 do things. Uh, you could kind of apply that to the Charlotte C squad in 2023, but I won't dig too deep into that. 